Well, welcome back. I have already done a few things here uh, before I came out. Mostly, I spent a couple hours yesterday trying to figure out why this PID that I had to buy, because I couldn't find my old one, wouldn't work. And eventually I tracked it down to my thermocouple here. I've got this big, you know, heavy duty one here. And, you know, I checked the wires going over and everything looked okay because nothing was loose. But I didn't check inside here where the wires come through the tube up here and attach to that. And that was actually loose. So that was giving me a, you know, no device error, I guess you could say. So I fixed that and everything's working good. These things are intimidatingly difficult uh, to figure out when you first, you know, try this. But the key is you hook up the power here on this one. You got to follow your schematic on the side here. You hook up your power and that plugs into the wall and you hook up your thermocouple, make sure that the polarity is right. And then when you plug it in, as long as your thermocouple is correct, I mean working, you're going to get a reading there, a temperature reading up on top there. And then underneath here, you're going to get the set value, whatever you're going to set it to to turn it on. And then, you know, there's different menu settings in there. I can't, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but it is relatively simple once you get the hang of it. So you just change your set value here. And then when the oven gets down to that temperature or below that temperature, it'll turn on the element and heat it back up to that temperature. So this thing, I've, you know, I started making the box for here and I cut out the front panel for this to fit into. And it goes in here, it's a square opening. And I just did that outdoors with the zip cut blade again. You'll notice that I overcut in the corners there because you know what, it really doesn't matter. I'm not, like I said before, looking to win any beauty awards with this one. I just want it to work and that's what this does. It holds it in. This one also came with these clips that you'll put in here and then push it forwards and that'll clamp it in nicely there. And then when you do use it, you're pushing it in the front so you're actually pushing it in anyway. So that's good. I've got one other thing I need to do with this uh, front panel here though, and that's to cut the opening for the switch. And I've already laid that out. The switch that I have is also a circuit breaker. I bought these a few years ago to use for something else. This is a 15 amp circuit breaker. So you use that instead of a fuse. Otherwise you would want to put some kind of fuse in there just in case something goes <laughs> wacky. You want to, you know, be able to shut the power off quickly. And that's what this does. This is very similar to the one you'll see in a power bar or a, a power strip. Some people call them. And it fits in this rectangular hole here. And to cut that, I'm going to do it old school here. I'm going to drill holes. And then I'm going to open those holes out with the step drill. And then I'm going to finish it off by filing the rest of it away. And overall, it doesn't take a long time. And it allows you to sneak up on the fit for the switch. Okay, so that hole is cut and looks good. I cut tabs into the edge of this when I cut it out and that's to fasten it to the box. I don't want to do any more welding on the case there. I could have easily welded this part on and then attached the other parts to it. But I want to be able to fully disassemble all of this just in case I need to make changes in the future. So these two tabs here need to be bent over so that I'll be able to screw this onto the case with just ordinary sheet metal screws. Even though the screws that I'm going to be using to fasten this to the case are self-drilling, I'm going to drill a hole in here anyway, mainly because I don't want to drive this screw into this case and into the brick. Even though the bricks are soft and it probably would work okay, I don't want that screw to go in there and push that brick over. Okay, with that piece on there, uh, the part that fills in the middle, I guess you could say, is this long piece here. 
and this it needs to be bent into a u-shaped with tabs on the end here to fasten it onto the side of the case as well uh, to make it bend easier i cut score marks right along where i need to bend it and i had a comment in my uh, case building part why i didn't bend the case itself into you know make it like this into a u-shape like that rather than welding up the corners this steel is pretty thick and it's pretty darn hard to bend unless you have a break and a break is something i don't have so i'm going to be using my vise and i'm also going to be using the edge of my bench to make these bends the first ones i want to make are these tabs i'm just going to line them up in the jaw and make the bend exactly like i did with the small ones on the face plate all right for these bends i'm pretty sure i can do that just holding it by hand Another reason for holding it by hand and I trying to get a really sharp bend here is I kind of jumped the gun. I made this bend right here, which I really shouldn't have. Should have done that after, but I think this is going to work. Okay, just line it up at the edge. Bend it over and finish the bend like that. I actually think that I cut a little bit too deep on these, but since they're not, you know, structural in any way, I'm not too concerned about it. If I really wanted to, what I could do is I could put a, a couple of beads, a couple of tacks, weld a couple of tacks inside here to reinforce those. But I think this is gonna be just fine. Now, just like the front panel, I've already drilled holes here for the screws to go into. I get those lined up. And I'm gonna get it all put together first, and then I'm gonna take it apart for the to put the equipment in there I just want to make sure that I have everything done correctly before I put any of the stuff in there and wire it up the back panel is different from the rest of it in that I've made it from a piece of aluminum that I cut out from a larger one. This is about one eighth of an inch thick and I just cut it out with a hacksaw. And then of course I smoothed the edge a little bit with a file. And I added this angle onto the edge here to mount it onto the cabinet. I also put a little clip on the inside here to fasten it to that side of the cabinet or the box I should say. So that's gonna go in there like that. And I've already got holes drilled for the relay, I just lost a screw. But I also have to drill a hole back here for the power cord to come through. So I don't even think I need to go to the trouble of screwing this in because I've already checked everything and everything looks good. So what I'm gonna do is just take everything apart and start putting it together with the wiring in there. I've been putting the equipment in and doing the wiring. I got started before actually by adding these connectors to the ends of the elements and to keep those from touching the side of the case what I did was I cut out a piece of perf board it's called but anything that's heat resistant or non-conductive can go in there uh, say an old circuit board that you just grind all the copper off of so you just left with the board itself and that'd be the same thing so I notched it around the leads and I stuck it in there and it can't come out because it's up against the front panel here I also put in the um, PID and the switch below it. I've added wires to these connectors over here. One of those goes to the uh, solid state relay right here. The other one is going to go to the neutral connection that comes in. I've got my power wire that's coming in here. And the hot lead, the black lead, goes to my switch or circuit breaker goes directly to that and then from there it'll come out and it will go to the solid state relay to be switched on and off by the PID. I also connected the PID to the solid state relay with this short wire here. It's important to note that these wires, including this wire here that actually powers the PID, do not have to be heavy gauge because they're not carrying any you know significant amount of current. Whereas these other wires that go to the elements have to be big enough to withstand the current. And in fact, these ones over here, 
that come from these connectors are high temperature wire. This is stuff that I bought when I bought the rest of the stuff for this oven in the beginning. I also added the thermocouple and I mounted that in the top going right down through. Originally I was going to have it going through the side here inside this case, but then I got to thinking that it's a bit too close to the elements. It might not give me a true reading of the actual temperature in there. A lot about this wiring is a little bit too complex for a video to show it effectively. So I'll have more information in the website article when I get that put together. Okay, I'm very nearly done with the wiring. I just need to hook up the thermocouple to the PID. Uh, I wanna point out one thing, my power cord coming in has a grounded uh, plug on the end, ground prong here. The ground wire from the cord is solidly attached to the metal part of the case. It's screwed on the back here like this, and then this will be screwed to the rest of the case. That's the important thing about ground. When you have it, it has to, um, all the metal parts in an exposed case like this have to be grounded. So this does that. So I'm just gonna screw on the back panel so that I can finish doing the wiring on that. Or actually, it'll be a little too difficult to reach that. So <laughs> I have to hook those in first. All right, now I'm ready to put the end panel on. I double check my connections, make sure everything was tight. Well, it's not a big deal to take everything off again, but you want to do it right the first time because it makes you look better on camera <laughs> when it actually works. All right, before I put the cover on, I'm going to plug it in and check to make sure it's actually working. Stand back. All right. No flames, no bangs. Element just came on. I've got it set for a thousand degrees right now. My Thermocouple is reading 17 degrees Celsius. So let's leave it run for a few seconds and see what it gets up to. Okay, it's crawling pretty rapidly now. This thermocouple is really beefy, so it takes a long time for the heat to actually penetrate it to begin with. Woo! All right, up to 327 degrees right now. Feeling the case, not even, still cold. 992 degrees Fahrenheit right now and climbing of course still on and look inside see the elements are off it just hit a thousand degrees it's been cycling on and off and maintaining that temperature inside there fairly closely I'm happy with it um, the back panel here being aluminum it also acts as a heat sink for the uh, solid state relay the solid state relay is not switching that much current because this thing is not operating on a lot of you know power so the back plate here is just warm to the touch in the meantime the case is still cold actually this has been cycling on and off uh, to a thousand degrees fahrenheit for the last i don't know 10 minutes and the outside is still cold like it feels cold what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this cover on. I'm actually going to test it out with a piece of steel after I get everything buttoned up here just to see basically how hot I can get this to go. Anyway, that wraps up this build and you'll probably be seeing this thing in some upcoming projects. I know that there are a lot of things that I've been putting off making because I didn't have one of these in the first place.